Wait, excuse me. I'm so sorry I have to win the train. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It said you were dead. You didn't believe that crazy bitch. <laughs> God, I can't believe you're here. What'd you do wrong? What happened is dead. It's just temporary. The commander smuggled me into the night. Some of them do that. It's just another shitty power trip. Hey, you were just here. You know the rules. Get back out on the floor. Find me later in the dorm mezzanine level. Okay. And fix your face, girl. Your mess. It's brandy. Scotch. Vodka. It's good stuff, too, courtesy of our Russian visitors. You got hair dye. Mm, the wives do like their legal chemicals. Speaking of. It's all here. Um, Oxy, Percocet, Speed. The eyes, thank you for your service. Are you okay? Yeah. No, not tonight. Okay. Hello there. I haven't seen you before. Davidson. She's with me. Davidson's such a kiss ass. He's that way with Price, too. Goes where the wind blows. I can't trust him. We've been hearing things from other districts. Purges. Could just be rumors. I don't know. No one's made a move yet here, but I can't help feeling there's a target on my back. Well, I suppose that's what happens when you're the boss. You do understand me, don't you? What do you think of our little club? I think it's fucking disgusting and you're a massive hypocrite. Why did you bring me here? Oh, yeah. I thought you'd enjoy it. You don't know her at all. This is not a love story, mate. June! June! No, oh, this is not a good idea, June. This is not a good idea. He's gonna go absolutely mental if he finds you out of that room. Oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> oh, God, awful. You look like the whore of Babylon. <laughs> Why does it let the bleep? Take a hike. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything. <clears throat> I, I took the train mm. into Boston like we planned. I remembered a safe house. Quaker family, they about lost their shit when they saw an ant at the front door. I got lucky they knew someone in the underground. They're smuggling handmaids out of the country, trying to. Anyway, I didn't get that far. Office park outside the city. They shot the guys who helped me. What happened? God, and Lydia must have... She must have shit a brick when you got back to the Red Center. They didn't take me back. I was a corrupting influence. They took me somewhere else. 
They were good. After they finished their questions, they gave me a choice, the colonies or Jezebel's. It was a few good years before your pussy was out. All the booze and drugs you want, food's good. We only work nights, and it's not so bad. We're gonna find a way to get you out of here, okay? June, I know the way out. Black van, feet first, that's it. Look, forget about escaping. It's just Gilead, no one gets out. Luke got out. Yeah. But he isn't us, and he isn't in here. We're alone, Jim. Just take care of yourself. You need to go. Come here. I love you. Okay? Me too. So fucking much. these bastards. Don't worry, we'll get you home before you turn into a pumpkin. Scowl all you like, Nick. Commander Guthrie has been sleeping with his last two handmaids, according to his Martha. His aide tells me he's, uh, he's skimming from transportation budget. Excellent. All of that should be simple enough to verify. The uniformed core of the eyes is our most visible face. But our best intelligence comes from our clean clothes operatives. Anything I can do to help come at a price? You do understand that as an eye, you'll chiefly be reporting on the activities of your own commander, Fred Waterford. Yes, sir. Sad business, the loss in your household, the handmaid. I only hope. Commander Waterford has better sense when the new one arrives. Well, no one's above What? Them. We're gonna clean up Nick Gilead. became an eye. So did Nick become an eye, like, because the other Alfred died? And he wanted to. Oh, shit! No, we already knew Price. You're back. Yes. Hmm. So, God, you are a prick. How, is she? How were things here? Oh, lonely. Nick, would you grab my bags? They're out the back, please. Literally, his face is twitching. Of course, He's the worst liar in the world. So, if he dobs in Waterford, he's gonna he's gonna dob in June, isn't he? Because I'm guessing it's not just the commander that gets in trouble in these situations. Jill? Yep. Nick. I'll see you later. Nick? We can't do this anymore. <sighs> Whatever you... You know I had to go with him last night, right? You know I didn't have a choice. I don't have any choice. So. Why? You're gonna talk to me? What a child. You won't tell me anything. I don't know who you are. Look, is this it? Is this, is this enough for you, this bullshit life? Is this what you want? You want to polish his car and once in a while just try to get a handmaid pregnant? Is that enough for you? You're being stupid. You know I'm being stupid. It's 
too dangerous. Could end up on the wall. But at least, at least someone will remember me. In this place. At least someone will care when I'm gone. Word. I brought you something. What? I had it in my bedroom growing up as a child. I thought you might like it. Here's a key. <laughs> I moved and I didn't want to be. single episode of this program makes me angry but I think that might be the most anger inducing episode of this program period Gosh, dang it I am so mad right now so these holier than thou devout pious bastards while everyone else is imprisoned by their patriarchal bullshit ideology, they're at Jezebel's, no. licking limbs, drinking margaritas, fucking sex worker handmaids? Are you kidding me? Is it? <sighs> I will do my best to do a review of this episode, but to be honest, I think this is probably the most self-explanatory episode of anything ever. This was not working on subtext or hint or, or anything. It was just a flat out assault to the senses. It was like, look what absolute pricks these people are. And they are. I mean, Commander Waterford, chief hypocrite, he knows he was responsible for the previous handmaid ended up killing herself his wife knew too and he's going through exactly the same motions with june just the same tricks 
and we got a little backstory on Nick. I felt slightly more favourably disposed to him that he's reporting on the commanders. But it felt to me like there was a lot of politics involved in this and that guy went down principally because he pissed off Waterford and Waterford didn't trust him. That's what it felt like to me. But he's the eye on Waterford. So seems like even though they knew about what happened with the previous handmaiden, or ha sorry, the previous handmaid, still he's in his position doing his same old tricks. I mean, it was it was never clearer than in this episode that he views women like June in June specifically, but women in general as toys. He's literally dressing up his dolly and taking her out on the town, you know, from his perspective. So the girls at Jessabelle's get basically plied with drink, drugs. They service the men. And when they're no longer of use, they go off to the colonies. That's what I got from there. And the big reveal in this one was Moira is alive. She's at Jezebel's. How long she's going to survive there, we're not going to know. But I'm really freaking happy that at least June knows where she is. So if she does mount some sort of escape, maybe there's a chance that she can take Moira with her somehow. I don't know how that would happen, but I freaking well really, really sincerely hope that it does. So, yeah, Nick... He's an eye. He got recruited as a sort of frustrated, you know, the kind of guys we've got going around in our society now. What they're really being shut on by is the system. There's unemployment. There are lots of issues with the way that we run the world at the moment that have actually precious little to do with women or sex. They're to do with power. You know, a very small number of people having too much power. So they dominate the other people. And funnily enough, most of those people are wealthy men. But of course, their movement is not taking on wealthy men. It's just creating a new power base of, of wealthy men. And it's just so sad to see... Because it happens every time. It happened in the Nazi Holocaust. It happened in apartheid South Africa. It happens anywhere. Where the kind of the establishment kind of power group. End up pinning the blame for what are actually their crimes. On the people often that are most affected by those crimes. You know of course we're going to feel sad for a guy who's out of work. But women weren't even allowed to work until about 50 years ago, properly, you know, and they're still not, we're, we're still not paid equivalent to men in most jobs for doing the same job. Still expected to do most of the care work with children and ailing relatives and all of those things. So how on earth the solution to, to our current problems is let's take the least powerful groups in society and make them even less powerful. That will that will solve it. You know, if we get all the women out of the workplace, then the men can all have jobs. Well, fantastic. But half the population is now oppressed. Ah! So that made me mad. I am going to eventually get into Nick's story, but every time I think about Nick, he just makes me really mad. I, I don't know what it is about his character. That's, I tell you what it is. What frustrates me about Nick is he, he's, to me, every bit as much of a man-child as Commander Waterford. He doesn't view June as an equal. He really doesn't. And he's willing to put her in danger. I, I mean... Let's say what he's doing now, ending it, is to protect her. That's great. 
That's great. That would be absolutely in the bonus pile for Nick. It would definitely work. And I, I hope that's the case. I really, really do. Every person that does a good deed in this program, <laughs> it just, it's like gold dust. So I really hope that's the case. But I'm not going to hold my breath. The bottom line, if he, if what he just did, he did to protect June, he should have told her. He shouldn't have been all sulky and, you know, leaving her to feel like she did something wrong when she didn't. The last thing she wanted to do that night was play dress up with Commander Waterford. She is a prisoner in this situation. She is a slave. Nick should not be doing anything which makes her feel worse about herself. So that's why I'm upset with Nick. Serena Joy and the music box. That was such a weird moment. Because you've got like a, one, a superficial look on it of like, wow, she's away on a trip and she thinks enough to actually get, she got a gift for June, which was deeply personal. It was her music box. And she hands it over. And June rightly appreciates the metaphor here, which is, hey, look, I am the doll in the music box. I, you know, I only dance when someone else starts the music playing. And in a way, so does Serena Joy at this point. So you could read that potentially as Serena Joy and June. Serena Joy saying to June, we have a shared experience despite our relative positions in the house. That could, that's a legitimate reading of that scene. You could also read it as that was Serena Joy reminding June of exactly where her place in the house is. I'm the wife, you're the toy. There's that. Could just simply be, saw the box and thought, wouldn't it be nice for her to have some music in her room? And it's none of it's definitive. So no one can say, actually, this is what she meant. You can say, this is what I think she meant. But it was such an ambiguous gesture, as so much that happens in this show is, you can read it multiple ways. And I think that really helps to communicate this sense of confusion and helplessness that you could imagine having if you were in that situation. Who do you trust? What are people saying beneath what they're saying? What do you take at face value? What do you read into? Who's a friend? Who's a foe? Am I am I even a good person in all of this? You know, it's I get, you just the questions just spiral and spiral and spiral, and that's why in part I am loving the show so much because it is so rich and deep and complex, and it, every single episode gives me a profound emotional reaction as well as some serious food for thought. I don't think you can ask much more of a TV show, frankly. Another really strong episode. We've got two to go of this season. And until the next time, bye-bye.